Let's bring in Nate Adams. He's the film critic. Great to have you with us. The last time we had you on, the movie theaters were about to reopen. They reopened and now they're shut down again. That's, yeah, we were open, I think, for 40 days. The theaters opened back up in October. It was like October 13th, and then they closed just after November. So, yeah, they were open for just a little bit over a month. You know, I I don't know necessarily if it, you know, it was going to have them open because, you know, some theaters across the country were already open, and I'm glad Michigan theaters got the chance, you know, like our local places, you know, like the Imagines and the MGRs, and I'm glad that they had the chance to open the doors and kind of see people and, you know, try and generate some revenue. But realistically, you know, and I was talking to some of, of uh, people at my local theater and they were saying that they were, they were like shutting off movies because people just weren't coming in. So like the, the attendance was down. And so I, I feel like they were maybe just breaking even if that it was more or less just kind of staying open to keep people interested in the movie going experience best they could. But this past weekend, we actually got some encouraging box office numbers. The Crudes, A New Age, which was a sequel to DreamWorks Animation's big film from 2013. That movie made $500 million worldwide. I don't think this one's going to come close to that. But over the five-day holiday stretch, it made $15 million. Now, listen, I know $15 million, you look at that, it's like, well, last year, Frozen 2 made $181 million. I know that's only a fraction of that number, but it's encouraging sign that if, if studios are weighing the option of maybe releasing some movies in this tough landscape, you know, they can look to the crudes with which had a decent marketing spend. It was all over like NFL football games and you saw it on TV. So they, they put money into it and it actually made a decent chunk of money considering that only, I think, 50 to 60 percent of movie theaters across the country are open. So that is encouraging. It's, but do you think the long term impact is going to be our movie going experience is going to change from here on out? Are we still going to go to the theater to see the big blockbuster hit i think so i think when everybody when when the pandemic's over uh you know i know vaccines are coming and it's going to take some time for that to get administered there is there is a, a a light at the end of the tunnel and i do think as soon as the dust settles and we can go back into public places i think movie theaters are going to have a huge huge bounce back especially as studios have held off some of their bigger releases uh like top gun maverick a Quiet Place 2, Ghostbusters Afterlife, uh, Disney's Jungle Cruise with Dwayne Johnson. Those studios made the choice to hold that product for next summer. Basically, everything got shifted a year. Now, I will say this. Uh, recently, we just saw Wonder Woman 1984 is going to opt for a day and date release, which means it's going to release in theaters that are open and also debut on HBO Max, which is Warner Brothers streaming service. For right now, that works. For the for the time being, I think we have to give people that option. You, if you want to go see a movie in theaters, you have the option to do that. If you want to see it at home where you feel safe, that is what you can do. Eventually, though, if it gets to like May or June next summer, which this is very, very possible because I think this past summer, I we said that, oh, everything will be back to normal by August or September. We kept pushing and pushing and pushing it. If it gets to next summer and it's May and we're still in this thing, studios are going to start have to, having to make decisions. So Marvel's going to have to make a decision with Black Widow. Same thing that DC had to make a decision with Wonder Woman 1984. The reason, the big reason uh, Wonder Woman is not waiting and didn't shift to next summer is because the film was made in 2018. The film was made and has been done for almost a year and a half. Eventually, product goes stale. Eventually, you have to start making a decision with your with your investment. And so if we get to next summer, you're going to probably Black Widow will start going to streaming, Top Gun Maverick, all those things are going to have to start making decisions. I don't know if that's going to happen. I hope it doesn't. I want to go back into a movie theater. But for right now, that's where we're at. Well, movies are important, but I wonder, too, how is this going to change the content that is created? Because they're not cheap. No, they're not cheap. And we're actually already starting to see a, a shift with that. So, for example, next week, Netflix is debuting a glitzy musical, The Prom, which has a crazy, crazy cast. It's got Meryl Streep, Andrew Reynolds, James Corden, Keegan-Michael Key, big stuff. And then and then a couple weeks after that, you have Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which was produced by Denzel Washington, and it has Viola Davis. And it also has Chadwick Boseman's final on-screen role, which I've seen, and it is earth-shattering. And I think that is going to be big, big, big hit. There are options. So... And that's the thing. Streamers are investing more and more in product, but also they're picking up things that the studios are leaving behind. For example, the trial of the Chicago 7 dropped earlier this year on Netflix. That was originally going to be a Paramount Pictures release that was going to debut in theaters. Same with The Happiest Season, which just dropped on Hulu last week, which I think became Hulu's biggest 
watched movie of all time. That was originally going to be a Sony's Pictures release. And instead, Sony decided to sell it to Hulu because they wanted to get these out to as wide an audience as possible. But Netflix has deep pockets. Disney announced that they're readjusting their entire framework and their strategy. They're going to devote an entire division to streaming like Disney Plus. They know that this is going to be their future. Same Netflix saw the writing on Raw three or four years ago. That's why they started investing in their own originals because they knew eventually everybody was going to start catching up. Peacock just dropped their Saved by the Bell reboot. All these studios and these streamers are flooded with money. And that's why you're seeing Soul is going to Disney Plus on Christmas Day. And Wonder Woman, like I said, is going to HBO Max because they need to boost those subscribers because they know that this is where the future is headed. So, too, thinking about that, because Netflix, uh, I just got the notice, um, my it's going up. Your monthly subscription is going up, I think, a dollar, something of that nature. But with that, uh, there are so many streaming services out there what's going to be the impact of this on the cable industry it's cable going away and because now so many people are just going to do the subscription based streaming uh options yeah we're already starting to see that too i think cable uh, what do they, they call it cable cord cutting i think has 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 gone down the cable subscriptions i think 20 percent year to date the thing that will keep cable alive and this is the only reason that i kind of keep a cable package because it's nice to have your local channels so you can watch your local news and that's and i know people can get a digital antenna and stuff and do that and that's fine but also live sports is a big thing people that some that's a deal breaker for people and as of right now live sports has not found a way to transition into the streaming game there is rumors in the industry that espn disney like I said, with their shifting of their streaming landscape, is going to maybe purchase NFL rights. There's because those 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 deals are ending in a couple years. That NFL eventually could transition to a streaming only platform. I think that's a long shot because I think the cable deals are too lucrative. But yeah, you're right. It is already impacting cable. A lot of people are just like, yeah, I don't need it because, and and I don't know about you, I've. I've been channel surfing before and nine times out of 10, it's like, well, there's nothing really on. I don't, there's nothing here for me to, to watch. So I'm just going to turn on streaming. You do have outliers. I know the, I didn't, I gave up on the walking dead like three seasons ago because it just kept going and going and going, but that is still a big draw on TV for some people. And I know the Kevin Costner show Yellowstone on Paramount network is a huge, huge ratings draw. So you are seeing these, outliers of cable programming that are outperforming streaming services, but it is very few and far between. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I had appointment television, where it was Friends was on Thursday night at eight o'clock. You knew and you right, rearranged right. your calendar to get home to watch it. And now you have that with streaming. Like I know I set aside Friday night. It's like, oh, the Mandalorian is tonight. It's like, yeah, I got to watch Mandalorian. Same thing. H I watch, I watch a lot of HBO. I think HBO Max is a great, great service because I watch all of their shows and they have a great movie library too. And so like that becomes appointment viewing. But again, that's not on cable, right? I'm not turning that on cable. I'm, I'm turning on my, my Apple TV every Sunday night. And I'm like, okay, the undoings on tonight. I got to watch that. <laughs> yeah. And on top of that, um, it, because a lot of this has to do with the television you have as well. I know if you buy a new one right now, they're all pretty Just got much one. smart TVs. Did you did you take advantage of Black the Friday. Black Friday? I did. Yes, yes. I, I I didn't have a uh it was too good of a deal to pass up and I needed a new TV. And my, my girlfriend was gone for the weekend, so I was like, no, nah, I just won't tell her. And she comes home and sees this new big TV in the <laughs> <laughs> Some of these TVs, though, we were in Costco, I think it was like 70 inches. I'm like, it's an entire wall. Yes, yes. And that's people are upgrading like I did because it's we're we're still in this looks like for another couple months. And I want you know, you want to make the it's not the same as the cinema experience, the movie going experience, obviously, but people want to have that, you know, that feeling and right. And that's where streaming is becoming a big player, because a lot of people are going to say eventually, aside from the big budget movies like the black widows the avengers that you have to go see in a movie theater they're just like well i can wait for this to come to Redbox, or i can wait for it to come on streaming and on demand especially with universal universal just struck that historic deal with cinemark theaters and amc theaters so in 17 days their films are now going to be available on video on demand this has been quite a cause of controversy because for forever for the longest of times, it has been 90 days was the, the window, 75 days for digital releases, because they were afraid that if you released a film too quickly at home, 
people would not go to the theaters to see them. But now that's why you're seeing Universal, like The Croods and Let Him Go, the Kevin Costner, Diane Lane drama, and Come Play, which is a horror film. Universal has had the top number one, top movie at the box office for four or five weeks because of that deal that they struck. Because in three weeks they can have it at home available for people to watch and rent. It's a twenty dollar it's a twenty dollar rental premium fee. But how much does it cost to take a family of five to go see the Crude's New Age in theaters versus let's just rent it at home in two weeks for twenty bucks? I mean, it's pretty. It pales in comparison. Yeah, I know, but there's still, uh, you know, if I can pay twenty bucks to go to the theater. I'm getting that experience of seeing experience. it on Absolutely. the big screen. In it's the audio that makes so much of a difference. Correct, correct. And obviously, people don't have you know. Some people do have their screening rooms, uh, like Dolby Atmos, ear shattering sounds, and you know. But for right now, you have to kind of just you know go with the flow almost. So what do you think is going to be the long-term impact on the industry as a whole? Because what we're not really talking about is the cost of making some of these movies and these TV shows. I would imagine if they're trying to film during a pandemic, the cost is going up. Yeah, so they are... only the bigger movies are the ones that are able or kind of to navigating this landscape right now. So stuff is in production and stuff is being filmed, but you have to have almost a task force designated to these new uh, COVID pers- uh, restrictions. And so you're, you're, you're kind of seeing it now, but uh, for example, dr- the, the Jurassic World sequel that is coming out next summer is probably the, the, the largest example. They spent over $10 million dollars in COVID-19 precautions. They housed everybody that was making a film in different bubble sections. They rented out huge hotels and they kept the cast in one section and they cast the crew in another. These people were there for four or five months. They couldn't leave. That's all they were doing. They couldn't leave. And and that's right now how people are making it work. But again, some of these smaller scale films or the people that aren't making films from Netflix, they don't have the luxury of, you know, nine extra million dollars in their budget to make these COVID uh, restrictions possible. So eventually, and right now we're seeing a steady stream of product, maybe in a couple months, we don't see that consistent stream. I know there's a lot of things on the horizon. The good news is a lot of films are made about, you know, a year or two in advance. Like you said, Wonder Woman 1984 is made in 2018. So a lot of these films are still in the can and ready to go and the good thing about movies being delayed is that they will come out eventually and that they are finished so in the long term you might see less content but stuff is still happening stuff is still getting made and i guess for right now that is we'll just have to take it for what it is so for people that actually work in the industry um actors actresses you know the camera crew they're are so many people that actually make a TV show or a movie happen. What does this industry look like for them? Well, I, you know, a lot of it too, you know, you're seeing set photos leak of things and people are wearing masks behind the scenes, they're social distancing. Like I said, only the essential crew members, I think only ever come around like the main cast because obviously the cast isn't wearing masks and they're not doing this, but they're getting tested around the clock. And for the foreseeable future, I think that's what's going to look like. You're going to show up to work and they're going to give you a, they're going to give you a test. What what kind of test that is? I don't know. I know there's a couple different uh, tests out there. And as soon as you come back positive, you have, they have to be isolated. So it's, it's a really risk factor because you're coming in a every day and you know some of us have the luxury of working from home you know they do not they're going on set and that's where these precautions are in place thankfully they have you know unions and guilds that have these things negotiated in case they do get sick and they have to go home they're still getting they're still collecting a paycheck which obviously that is good some people aren't so lucky that's what it's looking like for now and and, and a lot of these folks are having to ask themselves like well do i need to do i need to work obviously you need to work you got to put food on the table so they're really out there you know uh, putting their putting their stuff on the line the one the industry that has it on lock obviously is the animation industry uh you know the people that make family guy and bob's burgers and south park they obviously have it made because they can work from home they installed all their animators and their crew members they all have these new uh uh, per diem to go out and get all the equipment they needed and i think actually when this pandemic is over I don't know if some of these places are actually going to go back to working in a studio. I think they see, wow, this is more cost efficient. I'm having all these people work from home and, you know, we're also risking spreading out disease. So I think that'll be a long-term thing too. These people, some of these people that work in certain departments are going to actually permanently be working from home because it's cheaper for the studios. (laughs) So one of the things I will say 
Uh, I was excited for movie theaters to reopen, but I didn't go uh, once I did because there was nothing worth seeing, in my opinion, for that extra fee of going to a movie theater. And I felt like the movie industry didn't do a good enough job of doing a big PR campaign like restaurants and small businesses to try to get people to go to the movie theaters. Uh, the one movie I was looking forward to seeing is Wonder Woman. That to me is a movie that has to be seen in the theater. Yeah, and you're gonna still have that option right on Christmas Day. And, and for me too, if it if it comes around, I I might try and if I can go into my local theater and support them if they're showing it, I might instead of opting to watch it at home. I guess it just depends what kind of state we're in. And you know, 25 days it's now. Oh my, it's already December, and so we'll see where we are at the end of the month. But I will probably more than likely be watching it at home as as as, as a bummer as that is. But you know, my job you know requires me to see these films and update them and review them. So. I, I don't, you know, we don't get to pick and choose. I, I'm not gonna lie, I have been enjoying the convenience of getting these things at home, but you're right. There's nothing that beats going to see like a big, big, big budgeted blockbuster on on the, on the big screen. And so there was the Cinema Safe initiative as far as trying to get people back in the theaters, but you're right, it wasn't widely publicized. You would only see these targeted ads if they knew you were part of the movie going population, you know, a heavy movie goer like myself, or if you were following their Facebook and their Twitter handles, they were promoting the heck out of it if you went on their page, but you're right. They didn't reach out broader enough. And I think that was that was the issue because we had to send a message that it was okay to come back into a movie theater. I did go into a movie theater about once or twice uh, when they reopened back up. And I was impressed at the safety precautions that the theaters were taking. And I did feel very safe and it did feel clean and sanitary, but it was a combination of that lack of message to the consumer plus the lack of product. I'm, I'm, as much as I like Tenet, you can't survive off one big blockbuster for three or four months. And I think that was, Warner Brothers took a risk. They were like, we, re we released this movie. I don't know if it was the right movie to release at that time. I think if they would have released Wonder Woman 1984, might have been a better example because that is a big, broader, wide appealing film as opposed to Tenet, which is a very confusing Christopher Nolan blockbuster. Like I said, I liked it, but it's not a film that can sustain theaters for four or five months. And then, you know, War with Grandpa came out, that Robert De Niro family comedy, which wasn't very good, but it was something. Theaters were, I, a lot of the big studios were just kind of saving their movies either for when theaters could open or they were selling them on streaming because it just wasn't worth the risk. Nate Adams with us from the theonlycritic.com. He's also a Rotten Tomatoes film critic uh, in the Detroit area. Joining us on the Oakland County Megacast. And, and Nate, we talk about... Uh, what can po potentially be a draw to the theaters, but also we've talked a lot about how these streaming services are becoming more and more powerful as time goes on, especially the big hitters like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime that are bringing in some of these movies that are going straight to streaming or will be going straight to streaming if theaters remain closed. On the other side of that coin, if theaters do, get, do reopen and streaming continues to have this momentum because this momentum is not going away even if theaters reopen, what, if anything, have you heard or are you aware of that theaters are going to be doing to try to attract people back in? Of course, they're going to need to have those big hits, those block, blockbuster films to attract people there, but is there anything else that they are doing or planning on doing as an attempt to try to be competitive with these services that allow people to see these simil to see a lot of these same productions from the comfort of their own home. So the biggest thing that I've seen, so Cinemark started doing it when they reopened up. They let people rent private movie theaters, so that way people could feel comfortable and safe. You and I did, and we and I did this to watch uh, to watch Tenet with my friends. We there was about we got about 10 of us 15 of us together we pooled our money and we all went in and it was cheaper than actually buying a movie ticket and then it was safe because we could spread out in our own movie theater and not have to worry about you know we were in a well ventilated space and we spread out so that was that was a big draw because and, and i know those have been really really popular because i remember for a couple of weeks if you went on cinemark's website all their private screenings were sold was sold out like you couldn't get one and they were giving away like crazy and then if you noticed amc theaters started following that route and mjr started following that route 
And that's a that has been the I think the biggest thing because people are afraid to go back into a movie theater because of their own their own risk and their their, and their safety and their health. And so I think the idea of renting your own private movie theater was a genius marketing move because it's like, well, if you're not safe to go back, you know, the general movie theater experience, well, why don't you come watch your own movie with us with the people that you trust and the people that you know? So that's been what they've been trying to do. And I know they've been discounting concessions. They've been doing bargain ticket prices all day. I know my local theater was one movie was showing was five dollars all day. Some 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 theaters are doing their you know their normal promotions where you know if you have a loyalty card on Tuesdays you get free popcorn, all that good stuff. So they are trying. They're trying everything to kind of to get people interested in going back into movie theaters. Not necessarily know if it's working, but you know there is there is an effort there. And like we talked about earlier, just getting that message out there that we are a safe environment, CineSafe, it's online. You can go look it up, the programs and the protocols. Every theater in Michigan has adopted this, this, this platform. Just getting that message out there to the consumer that it is safe. And also movie studios have to do their part by releasing movies in theaters. Netflix has actually done a decent job because they've been releasing movies their movies on streaming and into theaters. I know, I know. Well, people will just choose to watch it at home because it's easier, it's it's cheaper and stuff. But at least they're actually trying to get movies back, uh, people back in the theaters. And Disney has been doing a string of re-releases during the holiday season. They did Hocus Pocus. They just did Santa Claus. I know Elf is coming back in the theaters. You know, the idea. And I don't know about you, but Christmas Vacation, you know, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is my favorite Christmas movie, as it is a lot of people's. And that is making a resurgence back on the big screen. I know the Capri Drive-In in Coldwater is actually still open. This is the longest they have been open to the season. So there's... There's a lot of things happening throughout the state that people are trying, they're trying to get uh, folks interested in uh, going back to movie theaters. Well, because the winter months are such a popular time for people to go to the movies, especially here in the state of Michigan Absolutely. and all the, you know, northern states. Christmas That's Day. That's what we do. Yes. It's the biggest movie going day of the year. It makes the most money, hands down. Somebody that used to work at, as somebody who used to work at a movie theater, I can attest to this. It was nuts how crazy it was at Christmas time. Well, it'll be interesting to see if they do, in fact, get to reopen on December 9th. I'm, we'll see. I'm not optimistic about that. I think, uh, it just, I guess it just depends, right? We have to see where we are, but I, I wouldn't hold my breath. Maybe we're open by Christmas. If not, we're looking at next year. Oh, well, you're listening to 89.3 WBLD Orchard Lake, 88.1 WBFH. Bloomfield Hills. Nate Adams, the film critic, always great having you with us here on the Oakland County Megacast. Thank you for your insight in the movie industry. Thanks so much for having me. I'm always, always, always an honor to be on.